All right. Welcome, everybody. True Wealth Investors Podcast. I am excited today because I have Arthur Solomon of the Solomon Group back. He and his brother Stas were here for episode 38, way back in episode 38, telling their story of getting into real estate and how they build a portfolio. And now Arthur is back to talk about some of the deals they're doing now because their business is on fire. I know you're going to be excited hearing about all they're doing and really going to benefit from what he can add. So thanks, Arthur. Good to see you again. Man, thanks so much for having us on again, Chad. Uh, really excited, man, uh, to discuss what we're doing and uh, hopefully help somebody uh, help help your viewers out and add some value. Yeah, I'm sure it will. We get to talk about every, just about every week in the mastermind. So I keep hearing all these tidbits and we get to share big ideas there. So I'm excited for people to, to get more people to get to hear uh, what's going on. So, so fill me in your business. I mean, if anybody follows you on Facebook or <clears throat> any social media, they have to see that your business is just exploding, taking off on fire, <laughs> right? If they're not following you on social media, they should check him out on social media. <laughs> so, so fill us in. What all do you have going on right now? Yeah, man, it's been a crazy year, right, with the coronavirus this year, and uh, we've just been so blessed, and uh, we've actually been able to double our businesses, uh, both of our businesses, the flipping business and the, the realtor business as well, and so a lot of times that will, one feeds the other and vice versa, so um, it really helps to be involved full-time in real estate 100% of the time, um, so we've been, you know, my main thing since I got in the business in, in 2009 and ever since I got my license in 2014 has been to, to get, just talk to as many people as possible, right? Because those people, those, those contacts, they let them know what you do, let them know that you buy houses or whatever you're doing and buy rent, rental properties, or if you're a money person or, you know, however, however you want to get in. So my, my thing is we've been making so many contacts this past year and everything is finally starting to kind of pay off, you know, and, uh, We've been doing a lot on social media, like you mentioned, uh, really getting some great results from there. Um, but yeah, we've just got a couple opportunities. I mean, it, it was been a kind of a, a slow start to the year, but we were able to make those contacts, uh, send out some posts, you know, some mailers and um, get some response back and towards the end of the year. And, and it was just more than we expected. Uh, it was really, really good uh, end of 2020. So that's awesome. I think. I think it's a good encouragement for people. A lot of times, um, well, one, a lot of people thought 2020 was like this negative year. Yeah, I mean, right. So many right. people I know is like business is just booming. Everything is is uh, going crazy. Um, but additionally, you know, we say all the time, your network is your net worth. And I feel like some people just maybe attend a couple networking meetings and then say, oh, it didn't pay off or they send out a few mailers and then say, oh, it, it didn't pan out. But from your, what you're talking about is this has been like since 2014 and you're finally getting momentum and sending out mailers and talking to people. And it's more of a long-term uh, game with the networking. Exactly. hundred percent. So one for people who want to build their network, because that's true, whether they're a realtor whether they're a flipper, whether they're looking for buy and hold deals, whatever niche they're in, their network is hugely impactful in their success. What would be some keys for, for people? What would you recommend to build their network? The biggest thing for me is being able to get on the phone and just pound out some calls. So call really anyone that's expressed interest in selling their property or, um, you know, like a for sale by owner, we call all the for sale by owners, like expired listings, stuff like that. They have expressed, they've obviously raised their hand and said, Hey, I'm right here, you know, uh, interested in, in getting my property sold potentially. So just making those calls, not being afraid, not, you know, just doing it, just have a script, have a, have a plan, uh, written out on your board, how many deals you need to do this year and stick to that plan. Um, Honestly, that's been the biggest thing. And then once you make the contact, obviously they've got to like you and trust you to some degree. Um, but I would say making the phone calls has been the number one thing for us, far on over, you know, sending mailers, social media, 
although social media is creeping up there, we're, we're getting really good response on um, sponsoring some ads, getting in front of people. So, okay. uh, but bar none, I think it comes down to that personal relationship. So one of my investors, actually, we've never done a deal together. He's a wholesaler. He hit me up. He said, hey, Arthur, I got this deal. I need to clear 22.5. And I had already had a buyer for it. So I showed my buyer and buyer wrote it up for 25,000 and we ended up just cutting a little wholesale fee in half, you know, it wasn't much money, but it didn't take much time either. So like 2,500 bucks cut both ways and, you know, for a couple hours worth of time. So the opportunities are out there, whether you're wholesaling, whether you have, you know, looking for rental properties, looking for fix and flips, yeah. uh, you can find the opportunities. You just have to have those connections. I mean, he would, We'd never done any business, but he was comfortable enough to call me and say, hey, got this house. Do you have a buyer for it? And to me, that's and and that's going to hopefully grow into a much bigger relationship to where, you know, uh, you know, we can end up doing more deals. So that's awesome. I mean, that's <laughs> that's such a basic thing, but not many people do it is just constantly picking up the phone and talking to people. Right. So. Have you ever had somebody who's annoyed that you, you called them up and tried to initiate that conversation? Yeah. You know, I get that question all the time. Um, yeah, you do. You do. Some people don't want like someone, but I don't ever call with, I don't ever try to sell anything. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm trying to see how I can add value to you to see what you need to net for your property. See, give you maybe a couple options, creative financing, or here's a cash option, or we can list it. And, uh, just giving people the option, you know, I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm just here to present some options. You like them, you don't like them. Either way, it's fine with me. I'm not offended. That's um, huge. Yeah. So I don't take it personally, to be honest with you. So unless you specifically say never call me again or something like just check in. Hey, you know, Mrs. Jones, we spoke a month ago, you know, just wanted to see how things were coming along and your offers on the house, you know, and then she's like, well, this guy, you know, cares, you know, he's calling me back, following up, stuff like that. And that's what people, they really want you to care. I mean, it's not just about selling some, a house or yeah, clogging up their voicemail box with endless voicemails about how you can help them. It's really taking the time, sometimes writing a little handwritten card, you know, just something unique, something that, that most people won't do, you know, so you just got to stand out. You got to wear a tuxedo when everyone's wearing a tux or when everyone's wearing a suit. Hey, now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> Stand out in the crowd. That's right. You got to do something a little different. Sure. All right. So fill me in. I know you get you uh, have been hitting some good flip deals currently, and the market is crazy hot. You know, if you have yeah. a nice product to sell, a rehab uh, flip for a home buyer. I mean, that's a good position to be in. So. Fill me in on that process for people who are wanting to do more flips or feel like they're struggling with it. <clears throat> How have you been finding your deals, dealing with contractors, things like that? Yeah, so it goes all goes back to making the call. <clears throat> so originally we have to make the call. A lot of times, you know, now that people know that we're in the business, they'll they'll say, hey, I, you know, if someone's saying, I want to sell my house, well, like my contractors, for example, they'll say, I got a guy, I got a guy. And uh, so we get some of those initial conversations through a lot of them are, are referrals. Like it, initially it's, you know, had to be if for sale by owners and expires and stuff like that. But now it's more a, a relationship kind of a deal. So case in point, there's a property in uh, Beaver Creek that we're looking at. It was brought to us by one of our contractors, Norm Claypool. And uh, it was just a personal relationship. We didn't have to market. We didn't have to spend all, you know, all this money, all, you know, calling them countless times. So those are the best things. If you, if you, if you, if you tell all your friends and family and they know this is the house buying guy, if I ever hear of anyone buying or selling a house, that's the guy. I got a guy. I got a guy. You know, so I think having a really good sphere of influence, a long term, long term wise, you know, and people know that you actually perform on the contract and you actually purchased it and they see that you do the work and you sell it and you make a profit, people have more, more confidence in you and in your product and service. So we've been able to develop a really good network with our contractors, with other realtors, with wholesalers, with investors, which, which has allowed us to get into uh, a lot of deals. I'd probably say 50 deals. They don't even come from anything that we do to, you know, not from mailers or uh, from paying social media to sponsor our ads or anything like that. 
So really just establishing those contacts, letting your friends and family, number one, let them know. Everyone needs to know. That's what I do. I'm the house guy. Call me. So it's awesome. Well, and I, I think, I mean, the referral is uh, the in-person referral is the best way you can generate business, right? If you can get 100%. your business that way. And it's a long-term thing. You can't do that overnight. It only comes from being successful, getting to know people, acting with integrity uh, to where they trust you and recommend you. So uh, the fact that you're getting deals and, and uh, references for contractors that way, that's a blessing to your business, but that also says a lot about you and the fact that um, people respect you. So that's great. We've got, yeah, we've got a great relationship with, <clears throat> with several contractors. Uh, Norm Claypool, like I just name dropped him. He did the entire job for me on my uh, Fairborn flip that I have at 626 Fairfield Avenue in Fairborn. And I have to, I've been to that house probably six, seven times. And that's usually not the case with most flips. You know, you're there more, yeah. more so. But if you have a good contractor, you don't have to run around. You don't have to nitpick and make sure the work gets done. Uh, if you have a good system and good contractors and a, a good foundation of trust, it, it makes it a lot easier. Man, I've had some serious headaches where I try to cut costs with those lower grade contractors. Suddenly you got to be <laughs> there every day. You don't need both, brother. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, finding that those uh, reliable contractors, are, that's huge. So Yeah, I know we talk about this all the time in our real estate mastermind meeting, you know, finding the contractor because that's a big bottleneck for, I mean, we could be doing more deals, but we don't have the contractors yet. But we don't want to just grow just to, to say, you know, for the sake of growth, we want to do it the right way and we want to have the right people be a part of it. Speaking of which, I seen that you posted that video uh, about that book, Who Not How. Yeah, yeah. And I've uh, been thinking a lot about that. Huge Good book for anyone yeah. that wants to. That was a Take game changer. So, I mean, yeah, and completely from that book, if you find the right contractors, build the right relationships, it's going to make all the difference moving forward. So, <clears throat> for sure. Um, so fill me in is what, what are some tips for, I know another thing I've heard a lot of people struggling with is the, the estimate on the rehab, you know? Yeah. Maybe they get a potential deal coming in. They know kind of what the seller's ballpark is that they need. They can see the ARV and kind of figure that out online, but they have trouble figuring out how to estimate that rehab. You have any tips for them there? Yeah, so it, that's a great question. And so many investors, uh, even flippers that we help sell their properties after they finish uh, fixing them up. My recommendation is always to get multiple uh, off, get multiple estimates. So case in point, we've got a flip in Troy right now in the historic district, 216 South Short Street. And uh, we originally got quotes for the roof and we got estimates from all the way from 30,000 to, I think the lowest was like 8,100, which uh, oh, didn't man. encompass everything, all the, all the, the wood. And so it, was, it wasn't very accurate. So I would say always, if it's a big, ticket item i would always get several uh estimates because they're going to be you know from thirty thousand to eight thousand bucks how is that <laughs> where's the difference coming <laughs> right. in that? yeah so, uh, and that's on the bigger ticket items i mean if it's smaller you might not need to do that but bigger ticket items i would say get multiple estimates and that's been a, a time saver for us and we've been able to establish really good network of people that we can call at any time and they'll be out there within a day or, you know, or hours sometimes to, to go out. Because in this market, as you know, uh, you've got to be able to make a decision quick. You can't, yeah. you know, wait for days for your contractors to give you the estimate. You've got to be able to, so we use a rule of thumb and, you know, there's a lot of people that, that use this rule of thumb, uh, 70%, you know, we want to be all in 70%. Now, sometimes, you know, in this market, we're, you know, closer to 75%. But we still like to be around that 70%, meaning the purchase price and the rehab at no more than 70%, and the rest would be the profit. And so we still stick to that formula, and it's been working really well for us. That's awesome. So I, I would say get multiple estimates and get just establish that, that network of contractors. You need to do that. If you're planning to, be, to do this a long time, 
you've got to have the contractors. So do you like to, do you, when you're doing your flip, do you like to be the GC and you're dealing with all the subs or do you like to hire one contractor to oversee it all? Yeah, so we've been really fortunate that Stas, uh, he's more or less the operations manager, boots on the ground daily basis uh, to work with the contractors. So I'm more or less acquisition and disposition side of the business. He's more or less the operations manager on a daily basis. So um, we typically don't have a, I should, I'll let me back up. 626 Fairfield Avenue in Fairborn is just a property, you know, I just picked it up myself and uh, I'm real, I'm busy already. So I had Norm Claypool take care of the whole project for me. So I let him handle the whole thing, but that's because our trust level is so high. I can trust him to know that he's going to do the whole job. You didn't so, start on day one with him that way. That's definitely that's not building that relationship. Yeah. Over the, over years and hundreds and hundreds of transactions at this point, whether I refer him out to my clients or I'm using him myself. So I would say only do, let them handle the whole job. If you have a really good trust, trusting relationship, but for the most part, we will, um, we will get several people because our whole objective is to get the property done faster. So one guy could do it. So for example, we have a great guy, Nathan Adkins always comes through kitchens, bathrooms. He's the best. Uh, he's not the fastest. Sorry, Nathan. I, I love you, brother. But uh, listen, if I want to get the project done, I'm going to pull in some other people so we can get the job done faster because the money that I've got there, it's opportunity, opportunity costs. Mm -hmm. So we got another project, 1285 West uh, or North Road in, in Troy. I think we ended up doing that project in less than two weeks. So we ended up pulling Shane Keaton and his guys that did all the painting, the flooring. Uh, we pulled in another guy, Terry Reed. He came in. He's like our X factor. He's, you know, whatever needs done, he'll do it. You know what I mean? So Nathan, he did our, he installed the, uh, remodeled the bathroom, you know, stuff like this. So we pulled in several people into this job so we can get the whole project done in two weeks, which we got done faster than expected. We got it on the market, got multiple offers over asking price. And we're closing in, I think, less than two weeks on that property. So over, and that was a creative financing deal where we gave the guy a little bit of money. We didn't even have to pay for the whole thing. We negotiated a sales price. We gave him some a down payment, took over his mortgage, put our own rehab into it. And we're going to do a double closing on the backside. That's so awesome. We've got a really good team, really <laughs> lucky, but it took, a, it took years to establish and for them to know and to trust us and to know that, you know, how we work and what our expectations are. We're simple. I mean, we, we, we want to make sure that our system is so simple, a third grader could replicate what we're doing. We don't try to make anything complicating at all. The simpler, the better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. Well, and it should be encouraging to anybody who's struggling with knowing the right people or hiring the right contractors. And there's no magic bullet or there's no pill you can take and suddenly you have it all together, right? It's just a matter of... Yeah. Constantly working at it, constantly talking to people and putting together that team uh, that will work well and, and be able to, to uh, do your system. So that should help people. That's great. I hope so. so. Yeah. And if the, if they have questions, we can just drop those questions in the comments and we'll try to answer them. Yeah, that's awesome. So a, for people moving forward, I liked your that hearing that you're still using the 70% rule, maybe going to 75. So that means that <clears throat> you have invested at max 70% of the after repair value, right? Yeah. So I think that's really huge right now. A lot of people in the hot market feel like they're stretching that number, but if they stick to that number, even if the market starts to cool, let's say if they have a little fear in the back of their mind on that, well, then you have a whole bunch of other strategies with that when you're not over-invested. So I think that's, that's huge for people. Just stick with the numbers, know your numbers, stick with it, um, know your exit strategies and have more than one just in case, right? <laughs> it's always good for me anyway to have more than one in mind. Absolutely, yeah. Well, in this market, you you know, a lot everything's pretty much selling if it's priced right and it's in good condition. So yeah, you really don't need to rely on the plan B like 
you know, like for example, if it doesn't sell, I need to rent it out or I need to yeah. consider some creative financing, which yeah, well, I'm still surprised know. my people on 676 Salem didn't take your offer on that one. I'm surprised too, honestly. I felt That's like you gave them everything they wanted. I know. And you even oh. gave them the baby with the tub. Or whatever they <laughs> That's say. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Full price, everything they want. Man, what what else can I give them? So. I don't know. I don't know. So that's, you know, if it was, if they didn't have so much activity, we, you know, we got multiple showings every week. So they're like, oh, we're going to get top dollar for it. We're going to get top dollar for it. We're going to sell it. And uh, we haven't sold it yet. So the time, reason why. the perspective may change over time. We'll see. Yeah. So, but you've got to be out there swinging, you know, and that's exactly, you know, you're swinging out there trying to put a deal together, creative financing. So the opportunity is there. You don't even need all the money and you just got to have a plan. Yeah, I agree completely. You know, there is no reason somebody should be standing on the sidelines, not in the market, right? Whatever you don't have, if it's financing or finding deals or whatever, talk to enough people, listen to enough podcasts, the information's out there. You can be swing away. Yeah, that's it. So all right, what do you got? What do you have that you're looking forward to moving ahead? Where are you going? Well, I'm just excited to be here today. I try to take it just one day at a time. Um, but now, you know, we're always looking for that. opportunities. Now, I know you're you're a big time goal setter. Don't give me that one day at a time. <laughs> oh man. Well, we want to double every single year. We want to double our business. That's always been the goal, and we've been able to do that since 2014. Um, so again, that, that's the goal this year. Um, we've got some pretty big goals set for, you know, for the realtor business for for the Salma group for uh, comfort living. So, you know, we're looking to, we're looking to do several flips. Like we have the team built out now to where we can handle multiple, multiple flips and, uh, you know, we can manage our own properties. And uh, so, you know, we want to be around 25, 30 flips this year, you know, so Right now we're at, once we close this one, we've got four. So we'll have four. So first That's month, awesome. we're doing pretty well. Um, but yeah. yeah, we're just looking for opportunities. I mean, it, opportunities are out there. It's just a matter of whether we're going to pick up the phone and make the call. That's it. There's no, the only limit is us. This is the only limiting factor. So I don't is. really care what the economy does. I know my economy, what I'm going to do and the numbers that I'm going to put in. And that's been the number one determining factor for me and my business. Nobody can, nobody can tell me you can't do these many deals or whatever. It's, you know, all kind of starts in here and you have to manifest it out. So I'd say 25, 30 flips this year. And then we're looking to do um, our big goal is the realtor goal this year. We're, we did 108 closings last year and almost $12 million uh, in sales. We were number number 10 team in 2020 for Coldwell Banker, number one company wow. in, the, in the Dayton area. So we're really excited about that. And we've been progressing every single year. So, you know, we want to be in the top five next next year, next time, or, you know, wherever we might be. I don't, I, we, uh, you know. That's awesome. Don't say too much. Well, I, I mean, everybody should definitely take this. If nothing else from the interview, that is up to them what they accomplish moving forward. That's right. Twenty-one. It is in their hands. So decide what you want and, and go get it. So uh, I appreciate you coming on, Arthur. I mean, you are a rock star in the real estate market. You got so much going on and so many systems and are able to uh, really be efficient at a very high level. So appreciate you. How do people find out more about you, whether they want to sell a home, list a home, uh, whatever? How do they keep track of you? Yeah, Awesome. Yeah. So here's here's the best way right here. Just call or text uh, or you can find us on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn on YouTube uh, or you can um, send us a handwritten letter. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> or you can go to soldbysolomon.com. That's our main real estate site. Uh, okay. You can find latest listings and stuff like that on there. Get an evaluation of your home, see what it's worth. So yeah, yeah. Call us, text us. We're always available. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity to be here, uh, Chad. You're an inspiration, brother, man. And you've got some big goals and just really excited to, to be on your podcast. Thank you for the opportunity. Always. I'm sure we'll have you on again. All right. I'm looking forward to it. All right. We'll talk to you soon. 
All right. Sounds good. Have a great day. You too.